Oh my goodness. You're going to be out of paper. No, no, no. I think, I think it's good. Hey, this is an audio podcast, and you'll learn a ton about cooking and eating, but for the full meal deal, check out the video on YouTube at Go Greenfields or at GoGreenfields.com. Alright, now it's time to do a little bit of a secret. Uh, our mom and dad have an anniversary coming up, and we're gonna make their, their menu. Oh, and we're gonna make their menu, but we're gonna make it look really cool this year. And I don't really know how to use a French press, but I'm pretty sure it just, yeah, just pours out the top there. We're gonna be aging this what paper to give it a nice. Paper? We're gonna age this paper to give it a nice beige color. Uh, so we should just move that around. Oh, that smells so good. It does smell good. I don't, I've never had coffee, but it sure smells good. It does. Until I'm 21, right? Kidding. Uh, <laughs> you can drink coffee when you're 18. Okay, so we're just gonna let this sit for like 20 minutes. And then we can take it out, see how aged it looks. Oh, well, actually, we gotta let it dry. And then we can like crumple it up and burn the edges, make it look nice and aged. Okay. Now that this has been soaking for about 20 minutes, a little bit longer for us, but that's okay. Um, the more you soak it, the darker it'll get, the more stained. Which, so it really doesn't matter how long it takes. But you want to be super careful. Don't rip it. Don't rip it. Maybe Do you want to use your fingers? Rip it. I will after I get the... Oh, the corner. Looks precarious. As you can see, it's this nice stain color. It looks like a rawhide. Yeah, I, yeah you could say that. Carefully. And we just let that sit overnight. When we get back, it'll be this nice color. Will it have ridges? Um, it's paper. You can find it out. Not slightly, really. but not much. And I would say it's just to let it drip a little bit, as you can see, just to, it could give it a cool effect. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. We'll see you in the morning. So we have our finished paper now. We've taken off the rack, and you can see there's a few grid marks, but that's actually okay, because our next step is to crumple no! it up. It was so good. Don't worry, don't worry. This is going to give it a nice aged look. Okay. Now that it's all crumpled up, we can carefully, I don't want to rip it, but I guess it's, yeah, aged, soaking it's, coffee it's, night. it's aged paper. But yeah, it, you see it got that nice color. It's not too dark. If you're ever tired, just give that a munch. You'll be fine. Give it a munch. I guess it will be coffee flavor paper. Okay. Now this is obviously a little bit too crumpled, so we can just flatten that out. That's okay if that fell off. <laughs> My mom ripped it a little bit. All right, next and final step is, Ooh, if you want to, you can, you can rip just a little bit off the sides, around some edges just to give it that, it's been old it's on an ununiformed look like that. And that's pretty good. All right. Oh my goodness. Go. Don't burn it too much. Don't worry. Just like singe it. Is it burning? Oh my oh, goodness. That's fine though. Ah! Do we have like the fire alarm? Is, 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 is the fire alarm gonna go off? Oh. Wait for it. <laughs> no, stop burning! Well, you put a lighter to it. Why would it not? Of course, it's gonna be burning. Like <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. We should like. And I would not do that. Seems like a bad idea. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, we will I'll see you guys back once this is done. done. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! You're going to be out of paper. No, 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 no. I think I think it's good. Well, oh, actually, this part right here, it's. I don't know if you're getting it at all. It's okay. You don't want to rush it. See that? Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, I thought it was fine. <laughs> okay. 
here we go. Should we demonstrate how you can write on it? Yeah, let me just. Put a pen in here. We'll be right back with the pen. Just so you can write on it a little bit better. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me too. Uh, yeah, looks good. All right, do you want to write on it? Yes. You look a little treasure map. <laughs> Actually, you do it. I'll I'm do holding it. the camera. Okay. That seems like a bad idea. You got me an unworking pen. I'm sorry. You're making the menu? Huh? Making the menu? Yes. What's our restaurant name? I thought it was always the Grassy Plains, is what we named our- It's a spoof off of Greenfield. Yeah. You didn't tell. <laughs> Should have been like really old gothic or something. Oh yeah, but hey, it's okay. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we'll be back with you guys once this is done. <laughs> what are you making? I, I'm making dumplings for our, our mom and dad's anniversary. That's right, because we just did the menus. We did, we just finished the menus. And now I'm making dumplings because it's China, it's their 20th anniversary. Oh, they're famous. So I know yeah. China is like the tea sets and stuff like that, like it's made of China, but we're also doing Chinese or so, Asian. Asian, yeah. That's a good idea. Thank I you. I should make something Asian. Yeah, you should. It would be crazy ingredient? if you did had all the ingredients. I should make baklava. Yeah, that's Asian. Yeah, but it's good, so. Early <laughs> dessert. Okay, well, we'll figure that out later. We'll figure that out later. That looks good. So, now the flour is, like, there's not, like, loose flour left, so now I can just knead it. And the recipe said, I've never made dumplings before, so I'm using a recipe, so it said to just knead it with chopsticks. So, <laughs> kind of uncultured Wait, swine, are you? how would we make dumplings? Do we make, like, metal dumplings? Um, Remember the podcast? No, those, Someone are, matzo, those are, like, matzo balls. Okay. I like how flaky this is, it just kind of falls apart. Okay, so here's two quarts of chicken broth, and then I'm gonna put this into the pan, along with two tablespoons of ginger. You can use ginger powder, but I'm just being authentic and using uh, just grated ginger. Good job. Thank you. And then, I actually didn't check if these are quarts. Yeah, one quart, okay. And then, after that, once this one's pouring out, add in my ginger and then I'm gonna add some soy sauce in. But I don't remember the measurements, so I'll get back to you. He's aging the ginger. Here we go. We're gonna knead my dumpling dough. And we're gonna let it sit for an hour, so start just ordinary kneading into a smooth dough, so. Here we go, and if you want smooth. it a little bit softer, you can uh, just replace a quarter of the flour with some corn, with cornstarch, and that'll soften the dough, but I didn't do that, so. Really, cornstarch would soften it? Yeah, I think so. I like cornstarch would be hard. Let me check. <laughs> Sorry, if you, want a more, some, if you want a more starchy dough, then you replace it with the cornstarch, not ah, softer. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Dough yeah, so it's a, little, it's a lot smoother now. You see, it wasn't as not, definitely not as flaky as it was. And sometimes the flour, the, the flour they're using, can also change how much water you need. So just add it till it gets to like a dough consistency, pretty much. You don't want it flaky, but you also don't want it like watery and sticky. So basically, when it doesn't stick to your hands, but it holds its shape, it's good. So now we're gonna let that sit for 30 to 60 minutes, depending on how much time you have. I've got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go for the full 60 minutes. And then we can make the dumpling things. This is gonna be really good. This is gonna be real good. Don't be like River. Remember your sesame oil. Sesame, sesame, yeah, sesame oil. You can use a heaping tablespoon or just a little bit. I'm just gonna do a little more because I like sesame. I don't know what they consist as a heaping tablespoon since it's liquid, but I mix that in. 
And you can add other ingredients too, like I added some paprika, and we have this thing called yuzu barbecue sauce, which is Asian, and some fish sauce. So I just did a little bit of other things. But I think I mixed the sesame oil, which is good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right. Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. I don't believe you. Wait, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, as I said, I chose dumplings and... What else did I choose? Not just dumplings. Yeah, I just did dumplings uh, because it's China. Potatoes. Smashed potatoes. Well, I'll get to that. So, I'm doing dumplings because it's China is the theme. And then I'm also doing smashed potatoes, which is like... It's almost like a potato chip, but thicker, and then you dip it in like an aioli and it's crispy. And I just did that because it looked fun, and I think it'll be good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all mine. And are we both doing pork? Or is it mainly pork. you? It's mainly you. Why don't you, why don't you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to use some bone in pork from US Ball Sweets to make some Asian pork to go along with the dumplings. And beneath that, this is the entree, by the way, I'm going to put some Asian coleslaw for the rest of the Asian dish. Because it's Asian. It is? And baklava, which is not easy, but... <laughs> it's close. So these are the potatoes, and, as I said, they're potatoes. And these potatoes are going to become smashed potatoes after they're finished boiling, just cooking them through. After that, I'm going to smash them, and then I can put them in the oven, make a nice roasted garlic aioli, and send them up with our entree of Asian pork chops and coleslaw. Now, right now, they're not quite Ooh. done, and you just steamed up the can. Steamy. <laughs> steamy. It's getting steamy in here. <laughs> I did roasted garlic, mayonnaise, some green chives, lemon juice, and then garlic powder and onion powder. It's all coming together. Right, you can piss case literally. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Oh, wait, you are too much. I'm not too much. Pellegrino. Yeah, no, that wasn't me. What? That wasn't me. Oh, you know what? It's on those. Just for a little bit of a kick, some cayenne pepper. That should be done. It's turning a little bit gray because of the lava salt, which is fine. You're using lava salt? Just a little bit of black lava salt. Yeah. We had normal salt. Yeah, but I didn't use it because I didn't realize. He was trying to be fancy and it backfired. No, no, it looks fine. <laughs> That's what he says. It's not. So, what we do for the potatoes, I have some extras here just to show you, is you'd put it on a baking pan. This isn't a baking pan, but then you just smash, make sure that was a little bit too much, but um, good thing on the second one. You smash, but you make sure it's only like half an inch thick and when they're cold, so you don't burn your hand. So you just smash like that a little bit better. And then depending on how big you want, like this is a little bit big, so I could just take out that piece maybe, wrap it around, just make it an eatable size. And then you put that on your pan, drizzle some olive oil, seasonings, you can put that in for about 20, 25 minutes at 425. That's a wrap. <laughs> So I've got this cute pottery thing that I made, and we're just gonna put the aioli in that. Uh, sprinkle some chives on, on top for like a, a little pop of green, because I think gray, gray and green go well together. And then they can dip their, what are those, potatoes in that? They can dip their potato in that, and it'll be delicious. You guys aren't done yet, though. And we'll serve them with the potatoes. Those look good. Gotta get the one that I'll mix Okay. There we go. Smashed potatoes, jeans. So right now I'm taking some ground pork for the dumplings. And I'm just gonna cut this up into some smaller pieces so it's able to be put into dumplings. It doesn't take too much chopping because it's already ground, but just taste a little bit. Then I'm gonna cook this okay, until it's eatable, edible. And then we move on to the next stage. So I'm using Primal Kitchen avocado oil, which you can find on Bag Market. Just because I like avocado oil, it doesn't have much taste, and it's also really good, it doesn't smoke. I personally, it's personally my favorite oil, so that's what I'm using here. And such as ground pork, you don't really have to take the temperature, but for regular pork, you usually shouldn't go past the 145 degrees. So, this here, so since the broth is so flavorful, I think if I just do a little bit of just salt and pepper, 
and maybe a little bit of like yuzu sauce, which is just a barbecue Asian sauce. It'll pretty much give enough flavor. So that's what we're doing. One cup worth. Oh, this is for the dumplings. I'm making my little inside dumpling, inside of the dumplings. Oh, does that make sense? Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Good. Might be as good as the pork cup. So, me and Taren are arguing about the best way to make these dumplings. I thought parchment well, paper. Which craft is this? And he thought rolling pins. So I'm doing both, and it turns out better. So listen to both sides. It's always the best decision. So this is what you're gonna put the filling in. This is what I'm gonna put filling in. Actually. Sometimes it's best if you want your things to stick together to use a little bit of egg, just because it helps keep it together, you know, because egg is a little fast. So, that's what we're gonna do, just because I'm gonna boil it in the broth that I made earlier, which will give it a nice taste. Oh, nice. Excited. It's pretty good. Be a little bit full, in fact, just to be safe, I'm just gonna take a little bit off like that. Alright, so we're gonna fold it to a half moon. I'm gonna try and pack as much can in there go like so. So I'm doing half moon dumplings and then you're just gonna like push with your finger to make that classic like dumpling cool. Almost like a you make sure when you're filling it not to fill it too full and you can't get the actual filling on the sides because then it'll just spill out. It's a really important step because you don't want your dumplings falling apart. Cool. Yeah. This. So this is a dumpling that Taryn made. I already made my dumpling and delivered it, but unfortunately we forgot to film. So See, I, I wanted to do a. This little, is our tiny dumpling. I wanted to do a little round one. This is this is our dumpling. This is our. These dinner. are a little bit more. I guess our most, our, ours are both our meager portion. <laughs> but we also just to make it look even better. So here I'm taking a half cup of honey to add into my syrup. Gotta do uh, eight layers on the bottom. This stuff is so thin. Eight layers of what? This is thinner than paper. What is it? It's phyllo dough. What's phyllo dough? Uh, well, from a glance, it looks like paper, but it's actually dough. It's really thin. I don't know how you make this. There's only like one place in the room that still makes it by hand, but it's pretty cool. Sprinkling my nuts on. Lots of nuts. This is nuts. This is really nuts. Lots of nuts. Really, literally, literally nuts. Come over here. I have something I'm doing. It's really interesting. Yep. So we got this soy sauce from Asia or Japan, I guess. Sorry, uh, from one of our friends in Japan, and it's got fish in it. And you pour like dried fish. Maybe. We poured coconut aminos in it. It's dried fish, and then it makes a soy sauce that's really delicious. So hopefully, this will be a super flavor flavorful soy sauce or what is this dumpling broth? My talking isn't working out so well today. Okay. Need some yeah, I need some buffalo. There we go. Give this a nice stir. I have a lot of fire lodo left over. Yes. But maybe not. Maybe we can just keep going. Keep layering it like lasagna. Endlessly. Didn't we make lasagna once? You did. I made I did. Oh yeah! I forgot about that. That was the vegetarian versus Non-vegetarian meals. That was fun. Smooth dough. All right, time for this to knead. Now I'm just cutting this up. You probably want to use the sharpest knife you have, just because that way it won't rip the phyllo dough. If you want at least a 
strips as possible. Uh, now I'm going to put this in the oven for 15 minutes at 350 degrees. Or until it's golden brown. It's with, that's the rule in most dishes. So this is the syrup for the baklava. In here is one cup of sugar and one cup of water. After that, I'm going to add in half a cup of honey once this is boiling, and then a teaspoon of vanilla, and I might play around with some spices too, because I like spices. Yeah, that'd be good. Maybe some cardamom, something like that. So this is the syrup for the baklava, actually. Once the baklava's done, I'll layer it, uh, or I'll pour it into the phyllo dough. It'll give it that sweet flavor while keeping the phyllo dough crispy, which is kind of good. Signature part of baklava. Wow. Wow. Baklava. That's pretty neat. We did it. Okay. Wow. So this cool. is the baklava plated. We don't have to do much. Obviously, we had to serve it on China because the theme is China. It's China, yeah. Not my favorite type of plating, but I, that's all right, that's all right. I don't mind it. Uh, yeah, so this turned out really, really good. I think. It looks like a dessert <laughs> lasagna. If you guys... No, I guess you, we, we didn't turn this into a podcast because it was so bad, but the last time we made this, uh, baklava, we were going to make a podcast out of it because someone sent us keto baklava. And the syrup was so thick and hard that we had to throw away the pan because we couldn't take it out of the pan. It's great for architecture. Yeah, it was like great for like building skyscrapers, skyscrapers but, but not, nothing not else. For <laughs> this. We hope you enjoyed this, and we hope you're as hungry as I hope our mother and father are, because they're going to be stuffed. Right. We got nine smashed potatoes, a thing of aioli, three pork chops, a bowl full of salad, four dumplings, including soup, and now there's a thousand calories worth of baklava. So, I don't know if that's a thousand. <laughs> Cheesecake factory, that's a thousand calories. If you want to make some of this, the recipes are in the bio below. The bio? Description. description. Whatever you want to call it. And make sure you check out more podcasts, videos. Head down to gogreenfolds.com. Get some really cool merch. It's all pretty great. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Subscribe. Adios.